how do you manage this how do you manage parents pushing their child so it's not about language it's about education and the environment our children are getting a score of 100 which is which was unlikely in the past in many many subjects When you think about the people who have influenced you in life after your parents what comes to your mind who are those people what have they done to leave an indelible mark in your life well the answer is obvious it's none other than a teacher teachers help us they help us build a strong foundation for life and carefully guide us to build a strong character they provide us with the knowledge and tools we need to conquer the world in today's episode we dive deep to explore the important roles assumed by an educator in modern times and for that we have with us the principal of dayavati modi academy mrs ritu divan hello ma'am hello how are you nice to be here same here it's a pleasure to be here so yeah like i said i'm a little bit nervous about meeting the principals but i'm also very curious about your journey so you run dayavati modi academy yes. which is one of the biggest schools in merit i guess yes could you for people who don't know about your institution would you like to tell what is your institute all about and you know what's the size what do you guys teach well the avati modi academy is a k12 cbse school and it has about 4000 students and which are housed in three age appropriate campuses okay so your primary school middle school are different there are three different campuses so there's a primary school campus middle yeah. school campus and everything and in all we have about 11 acres and it's a very green campus and it is also known as a green school of merit oh really yeah and it's the school has been around for a while i understand uh well this is a 39th year running you've been associated with the school since how long well i started my career from this school as a teacher i taught english uh, for a while here okay um, before before moving abroad and mm. uh, i had completed my education abroad and had come back and since then about from past 11 years I've been heading the school. We all have grown up a little bit nervous about principals being called into the principal's office. But now I want to know from you what are the challenges what are the biggest challenges about being a principal and you face and how do you overcome them? Well, the biggest challenge uh for me as of now is having the three campuses and at the same time our school is uh, situated at a belt where we have a rural and an urban mix. so when the children from different backgrounds come especially the first generation learners along with the parents of today who have a lot of expectations to have both of them together on the campus and then also training teachers to meet the needs of all these students that becomes a challenge sometimes yeah that does sound like so you're saying you could theoretically like you have situations where first generation learners means their parents are actually not educated not even literate maybe yeah. like a farmer's kids yes. who is a uneducated farmer he's sending the kids to school for the first time and then you have this mnc executive who works in a i don't know it company IT and they want their child to go and you know become somebody else and they're all in you have to take care of all of them yes and everybody has different expectations yes. but you insist that they will be mixed together yes that is what i insist you don't segregate you don't do it's things it's a completely like. inclusive school with a lot of holistic education around so how do you manage this with some uh, you know parents come and say i don't want my kids to study with these type of kids and or like some parent comes and says my kids finds it very difficult to understand what is happening because this kid speaks such good english mind doesn't i mean i'm sure you have situations like this how do you balance this well it's a mini world so the child has to move out into the world and he would be adapting to different situations even outside so it's a kind of a training and i'm sure you know the peer learning works very well and children teach other very well so it's not about language it's about education and the environment so yeah. we provide a very conducive environment of learning you know these days this huge pressure for marks competitive exams everybody wants to become an engineer doctor whatever have you and especially in the higher classes it, the pressure can get very very 
intense you have so many students everybody is not going to make it into the top 1% yes. which is what you need to get into these colleges how do you manage this how do you manage parents pushing their child how do you make sure that and how do you push the child also but at the same time not stress the child that's a big challenge these days because stress is something we do not want to give to the child well academics is important percentage is important uh, we do a lot to enhance that academic aspect of the children and our children are doing extremely well where uh, du admissions which are one of the benchmarks plus international placements our children are getting a score of 100 which is which was unlikely in the past in many many subjects but that's not exactly what we are aiming at it doesn't matter whether the child is getting 100 or 98 what matters is what he does in life so that is why we are training and honing all the skills of the children providing them all the platforms especially if you talk about subjects in 12th class class 11 and 12 when we it's a cbsc school we have about 22 subjects for choice for them which is very very different from any other school in the vicinity they can study physics with history and economics and you know uh, any combination of their interest and we have a lot of activities a plethora of activities for them where their confidence is enhanced and at the same time we train them for debating communication more of articulation which would be required at a later stage in life all right all yeah. right that's good how about you like what inspired you actually you said you started as a teacher but to go back even further how did you even become a teacher and why did you become a teacher did someone inspire you or you know what kept you going and then from a teacher to principal how did that happen but it may sound cliche but yes my mom was a teacher okay and uh, when she used to go ho- go out in a crisp cotton sari every day and children would have so much affection for her I think that was my first love that I oh, wanted. Really? To, yeah. Oh, really? Oh, nice. So that's how I was inspired to be a teacher. And then I was also um, very enamored with my own teachers in my school, and uh, somehow it, that passion kept going. <laughs> so. So you knew from the childhood that uh, you want to become a teacher. Yes, I did. Yes, and then teacher to principal. Okay, that's a very different role. Yeah, it's a very different role. I've been, um, let's say, if I describe myself, I am a teacher with. a lot of passion which is again cliche but at the same time i consider this to be more of my religion more of my mission i i seem to be living for my children so we have done so much of teaching over the years that when children come back to us after 10 20 years and when they say that you've made a difference in my life i thought of making it go on a larger platform so rather than affecting just one class it would be it it's really better to have all the students being and not trained by me i think this needs to be it's okay just it's say it again. it's rambling okay. nahi nahi yeah so how did you become a principal from teacher to principal is very different hmm. how did you feel that you are ready for that role impacting lives was something that i really wanted to do and i have been doing it as a teacher but this was something very different i wanted to touch the lives of all the students meaningfully at one go and this was the best way of doing it okay but did it mean a lot of more work Uh, your work life balance your own family life yes. did it all get affected it it did get affected but i trained myself for it first yeah. and then of course a training for my family too yeah. they are a great great tremendous support and yes being a principal is 24 by 7 work and three schools yeah, effectively and right? three schools so yeah. but i balance it very well uh, what's your typical day like i mean when do you start when do you finish how many hours do you work uh well i start at 7 in the morning and maybe 7 in the evening is the time when i reach home and oh, so carry some work home emails to be answered in the night <laughs> yeah so that's how it goes and weekends as well and weekends as well no weekends no weekends yes you know people always are jealous of peop- uh, you know uh, people working in schools they say you get so much chutti so much vacation things like that so is that a something that's a myth i guess people it's a do. myth because a teacher never takes a vacation she's always there for the children yeah 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 just one call away <laughs> yeah we have a special message for you from students who want to share how dma is helping them discover who they are let's let, let's have a look our principal inspires us motivates us encourages us and wants uh, and most importantly she touches our hearts 
through the philanthropic values that she wants to cultivate in her students. There are regular visits to old age homes and orphanages which shows uh, em which cultivate empathy in the students. She also wants to make us global and responsible citizens by instilling values such as conservation of nature. I have been teaching here for the past 10 years. These 10 years have been very pleasant due to the guidance of our principal, Dr. Mrs. Ritu Devan, ma'am. My association with her is age old. When I was in class 9, she entered my class as a teacher of English. I really remember the first lesson that she taught and how impressed I was with her communication skills, with her positive aura, the way she carried herself and, of course, her knowledge. As the head boy of this prestigious academy, I believe that our principal ma'am has always been a great mentor. Whether we fail or we succeed, she always inspires us to be a better version of ourselves. She is a dynamic leader and she has touched many souls and inspired many minds. She always creates opportunities for us as she believes that each child is special. Getting things done by others. It's about creating an environment we all can work together like a team to achieve the desired organizational goals. And how such a conducive and progressive environment is created, I learned from my learned principal, Dr. Mrs. Ritu Divan. The way she carries out a plan and systematically organizes each and every work, taking all of us together and comes up with a productive outcome is really commendable. The very essence of her dynamic leadership lies in the fact that at the one end of the spectrum, she is a strict disciplinarian and a hard taskmaster at times. And on the other side, she is a soft, polite kind of person who has a personal connect with the, almost every member of the DNA family. Like, a elder, like an elder sister, she shows her concern and care for each one. I hope you like that. Yeah, I did. <laughs> yeah, it must feel very special. Um, who, are, who have been some of your role models? You said your own mother was yes. when you were growing up. Are there any others who have inspired you in your journey, your colleagues, your friends, or I don't know, anybody else in your life? Yeah, colleagues always have inspired me. And I think that was one of the reasons when they also inspired me to become a principal of the same school. And with their support, I've done a lot of work together, even now. And uh, most inspirational role, if somebody's played in my life, is my husband. Okay. He's a chartered accountant by profession, Mr. Sanjeev Devan. And very, very hardworking and very committed. And he too reads voraciously like me. And he's actually a support because I completed all my education also after marriage. Okay. And thereafter, I started my career. Okay. So, I'm there because his support. Why is there a great place to study? Because it's a very happy school. Okay. A school where a child doesn't want to miss school. And he has, uh, there are several children who have 100% attendance and they're awarded every year just because they do not want to miss a single day of the school. We have hundreds of things for the children, which uh, children love. And at the same time, they love to learn. Yeah. I think, if, I think that sums it. If, if, if students are not scared of school, they look forward to school, you must be doing something right. It's been a real pleasure talking to you, ma'am. Thank you so much for coming all the way. I have a little memento for you and we'll take a picture. But great to see you. Thank you for being part of the show. With this, we come to an end of yet another inspiring episode of Skill Tree Education Evangelist of India, Season 3. Thank you for joining us. Don't forget to tune in next time to meet another stalwart from the Indian Education Fraternity. I'm your host, Chetan Bhagat, signing off. Keep watching. This show is streaming exclusively on ForbesIndia.com.